Hey guys, it's Liam and Blake from Redefine Horizons. It's my last video of the day today. I'm kind of happy about that, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Ready to go home and eat my dinner. But, not done yet. Got a few minutes here for this video. Uh, what we're going to talk about in this video is three questions to ask about property corners. Okay, and I'm doing this video for my cat ninja, Elena. She knows who she is. And part of what I'm trying to do is, uh, Elena's been drafted drafting for me now for about a year or two, and uh, she's getting pretty good at CAD, but I, was, I want to start to teach her a little bit more. I want her to understand what she's drawing so that she can help me be a better surveyor because she's going to ask questions and catch mistakes that I make potentially. And so when we do a lot of record of survey maps here in my practice because we do a lot of boundary surveys, and so I want her to understand so the three questions she can ask when she's drafting one of my maps and she sees a property corner. So let me give you an example. Let's just do simple, something simple. Okay, so let's say we've got a four-sided parcel. Okay, now let's just, we'll just leave it like this. So we got a four-sided parcel, okay? And I'm just gonna number my corners. One, two, three, four. Okay, and we've got a bearing of distance between all these. Okay, so as she looks at each of these four property corners, she's going to draft my record of survey or my, my boundary working drawing, my boundary final drawing. I want her to ask these three questions. Okay, So at every corner, the first thing I want to ask is, at this location, was there a monument in the record? So I'll write these questions down. One, was there a monument in the record? Okay, what does that mean? Let me explain that. What I want to know is, was a monument set there by another surveyor uh, and shown on a previous map or in a deed? Okay, and so in order to answer that question, what a survey technician has to do is they have to go and they have to look at the maps and deeds that were pulled for the project, and they have to learn how to read those maps and determine is there a corner there? Was there was there a monument? Sorry, was there a monument at that corner? Okay. So that's the very first question. Okay, here's the second question. So let's just say, okay, so if you if you do do all the research and there was no corner, and you're basically done. Okay, uh, if there's no monument ever set. Now, as a as a boundary surveyor, I may still look for a corner there because sometimes you find corners. You find I may look for a monument at the corner because sometimes there's monuments that are set that aren't on a record. They're on a record map. But if I do a field survey and my survey text draft in the map and there's not a corner there. And she doesn't have a point there of a found point. She's probably she's probably done, or he's probably done. Okay, but let's just say in the record there's a monument. Okay, so here's the second question. The second question is, did we look for the monument? Okay, so she needs to know. Did we look for it? Did we look for what was there in the record? Okay, so if the survey map says there was a two-inch iron pipe there, she needs to know. Did we look for the monument? Now, she may have to check the field notes to answer that question, or she may have to look at the raw data okay, in Trimble Business Center, or she may have to ask the field crew, did you look for this corner, right? So if she checks the notes, and she checks, checks the raw data, and she can't find an answer, then she might have to talk to the crew. So she needs to find out, did we look for it? Now, if the answer is no, we didn't look for it, okay, then she needs to ask a follow-up question, why not? Okay, why didn't we look for it? Now, there may be a reason we didn't look for it. It could have been in the middle of a briar patch. It might have been underneath a parked car. Uh, we might have run out of time and decided that it wasn't critical. Okay, but I want her to ask this question to keep me honest, right? Especially if it's a corner on our subject parcel, I better have a good reason why we didn't look for that or I better be going back, right? And even if, if it's a corner on an adjo adjoining parcel, right? If it was in our original search plans and we didn't look for it, she needs to ask why and I need to be able to give her a good answer, right? I want her to keep me honest. She's I'm teaching her to help me. Right? Okay, so if we didn't look for it, why? If there was a reason why we didn't look for it, you know, it was in the middle of a briar patch, then we might need to note that on our survey. Right? I'll give you an example. I was doing a survey up in the foothills in the East Bay, and uh, we were down on this gully. It was really rugged, it was rugged steep train, and this guy said he, he set rebars down in this gully. So I get down in the gully. This gully is solid bedrock. Solid bedrock. I didn't find any rebar. So I don't know what, like, did this guy lie? Did, did he not set anything down there? Uh, but say he set rebar, did he, did he put, did he beat rebar into cracks in the rock? 
You know, did he bring down a steam-powered drill? <laughs> like, did he stack rocks up around the rebar? If that's true, have the rebars been long ago washed away? I don't know, but what I did on my survey was I put a note that explained those conditions on my map. Hey, I didn't find anything here. By the way, this guy said in 1932 that he set rebar down here in this goalie. It's solid bedrock. I don't know how he did it, right? Some kind of note like that. So, if we didn't look for it, she needs to ask why, okay? If we did look for it, she needs to ask, what did we find? Okay. And I'll give you a follow-up question, because I, I want her to keep me honest. I will, she needs to ask, what did we find? Okay, And whatever we found, okay, what did we find? The follow-up question is, did it match record? Did it match record? So if, if the record called for a two-inch iron pipe, and I found a, a PK nail and shiner in pavement, we got to figure out what to do about that. Maybe I got to go back and dig under the pavement for the monument. Maybe the pipe's gone and we're missing a record that explained how that swap got made. Uh, or maybe there was a mistake. Maybe the field crew, field crew coded the point description wrong and they were in the field. And if she checks the picture, she finds a picture of a two inch iron pipe at that location. Mistakes get made. Part of what I want to teach my survey tech is to help me catch those mistakes. So what did we find? And did it match the record? Those are the three questions I want Elena and my other survey techs to ask when they're drafting them a boundary survey. I want them to ask that about every property corner that we're showing on our boundary survey. Three questions for every corner. So in this case, she's got to ask 12 questions, four corners, right? And she's got to learn how to read the pictures and the notes and look at the old maps to answer these questions. That's the difference between a good survey tech and just a drafter, right? Don't be just a drafter. Be a good survey tech, learn how to ask these questions. Now, I'm going to do another video where I talk about the three things you need to ask about the property corner monument when it's found. Okay, we're going to talk about that. And I'm going to give you a list of things that you want to include when you label a bearing and distance on a boundary line. I'm going to give you the, the things that at my shop that you want to make sure are included in your label. Okay, so we'll do, we'll do a couple more of these videos that'll help you guys be not just better draft people, but better uh, survey takes and better boundary surveyors. Thanks for watching.